Good morning, good morning everyone. So today is... Race day, race day, race day! It is race day for my ultra marathon. We are both super, super excited. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna tell you guys about my ultra marathon, what I'm kinda doing to get prepared for it this morning, and then show you guys some clips from the race. But before we get to this video, I want you guys to know that you are greatly, greatly loved, and that you are wonderfully and beautifully created and that you're capable of far more than you could ever imagine. So guys, my beautiful wife Phoebe would be running it, but she is going to be trying to Boston qualify in three and a half weeks. Oh, that sounds scary. How do you feel about that, babe? Gonna kill it. What do you have to run to qualify? A 3.30. A 3.30. Smoking fast. And if I want to qualify for Boston, I have to run a three-hour marathon. Or break three hours. So hopefully we can both do that here in three weeks. But today is the ultra marathon. So what do I have? I have no clothes on, to be completely honest. But you guys won't see that. Um, I have this <laughs> North Face uh, beanie. I have this belt here. It is my fuel belt. And this is packed with some encaged here. So those are about 10 ounce bottles. I have one serving of encaged there. And here you can't see, but there's two cliff bars in there for some fuel. It's going to be dark when we start. So I have my headlight right here. And then I have some gloves just for, for the start when it's a little chilly out. Um, I have a long sleeve throwaway shirt just in case I need it. And then I'm going to be wearing a tank and some shorts there. And then if we go over here, I have my Pro Max bar right here. Delicious, 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 which I'm going to eat right before the run. I have this one is pre-caged. So that is one of the supplements I take. It is a pre-workout, which you can see it right there. Pre-caged. Yeah. So I do take a pre-workout before I run. Most studies have shown that caffeine, about 300 milligrams, is extremely, extremely benefit uh, beneficial to marathon runners. So I do take that before my runs. Outside of that, I'm going to drink a cup of coffee. Relax. Oh, and I have my headphones. Outside of that. Drink a cup of coffee, relax, and get ready for this ultra marathon. We are approaching the start. <laughs> the start <laughs> in this deserted country of Tulsa. Woo! Hey, they have a disc golf course here. Hey, there you go. That can help pass your time. Hey, there's a mile marker. Is it? No. Uh oh. Look at this, Turkey Mountain. Turkey, Turkey Mountain. All right, guys, well, I'm going to go uh, walk around, talk to some of the other racers, kind of get set to ready rock and roll. So I'll probably not be seeing you guys until I get done with the race, um, but I will be throwing in some clips from a GoPro, which I have, that I'm going to have strapped to my face. Um, so you guys will get to see some clips. So the only other parts of the video you'll see is if my beautiful wife here wants to say anything to you guys, but she does have a 20-mile run today as well. All right, guys, time to go climb this turkey mountain. All right, have a blessed day. You're ultra loved and ultra beautifully made. Oh, what? And what? ultrally more than you could ever imagine. <laughs> All right, guys, so at the end of my video, I said that I was going to do a race recap at the end, but I thought that I might as well just kind of do it throughout the videos of me running and you guys seeing the trails. So let's get started with the beginning of the race. So. At the beginning of the race, I was definitely, you know, a little nervous. I have never done a trail run. Um, I, I've actually done one other trail run, but that's it. And that was about a year and a half ago with my wife as she raced a half marathon trail run. And so I'd never really done, raced a trail run by myself. And I've only ran on the trails one other time. And I've also never done a 50K. So this was going to be a first experience for all of it. So I was pretty excited, but also pretty nervous. So getting to the starting line, there's about 20 of us running the 50K. And uh, there were some people at the front that I could tell that they were not beginners. 
And so in my mind, I was like, this is my first one. I do have a, a marathon that I'm trying to qualify here in three weeks. I'm not gonna like go all out 1000%, but let's see how long I can stay with these guys. So at the beginning of the race, uh, you know, they just kind of warn us. They're like, make sure you have your headlights on, lift up your legs. There's a lot of rocks, a lot of roots and things like that. Never did I expect that there would be as many rocks and as many roots as what they had said. By far the rockiest terrain I have ever even tried to walk on, let alone run on. So it was pretty nuts. So anyway, the gun goes off or whatever they used to sound the um, start of the race. And these two guys take off, like just absolutely flying. The guys that I said I was going to stay with, I'm like, oh gosh, this is going to be... Uh, kind of rough so I tried to get past everyone and get back up there with them uh, there's one guy in the lead he was pretty far ahead of uh, the second place guy and the second place guy I was maybe 20 or so yards behind him and so in my mind I was like I'm just gonna he was wearing a white shirt I said as long as he's in my view his white shirt's in my view then I'll be good I'm just gonna try to stay with him as long as I can so first couple miles I think <clears throat> we were on like a nine minute pace 830 pace uh, some of them get right around an eight minute uh, even pace. So we were going pretty quick and I was trying to stay on that guy's heels and these rocks were just absolutely nuts. I just couldn't believe it. But I thankfully, I don't know how or why, but I was pretty quick going across the rocky terrain and going down hills. And so that second place guy going up the hills, he was like 6'2", maybe, you know, uh, 155 pounds he could fly up the hills um, but then I'd always catch him going down the hill so I stayed with him as long as I could uh, we got to about mile six uh, we got to about mile six and when we get to mile six there's this aid station and we uh, just quickly grab a drink and they tell us we're at mile nine well me and that second place guy were like there's no way we're at mile nine there's just absolutely no way our watches both say six miles there's no way this is mile nine well they were like they tell us, well, you must have taken a wrong turn. You have to go back on the trail and, you know, get back on course. And we're like, you've got to be kidding me. We're in second and third place. Well, I guess the first place guy got lost as well, actually. Well, anyway, so we get back on the trail. Um, we go about another mile and we end up back at that aid station. And they tell us the exact same thing. So we do it again. End up back at that aid station. So literally, we've been running around for an extra two miles trying to get back on track and we just couldn't do it. So it was at this point where... Now, Jonathan is the guy's name where we finally introduced ourselves to one another and was like, hey, you know, let's figure this out together. Let's run this together till we get to, you know, the halfway point and then we'll decide what to do from there. Well, so finally, um, we got back on the trail. We finally found it and we started going, well, what had happened was that aid station was wrong and they were not at mile nine. They were at mile six. But they were telling everyone on accident that they were at mile nine, so everyone was getting lost, and it was ridiculous. Five miles in, so, well, almost five miles in, so about a sixth of the way. To be honest, it's been pretty rough. Uh, I'm honestly really scared about the way back, because it looks like we've been doing a lot of downhill. And we went down some monstrous hills, so what that means is on the way back, since it's a two-loop one, and we go in the reverse direction, we're gonna have to climb those monsters. So, a little bit nervous for that. Hope you guys have enjoyed the view. See you guys a little bit later. Well guys, no good sucks. My buddy and I got lost. Had to backtrack quite a bit. So we're definitely gonna eat into a lot of our time, but as long as we get back on the trail, we'll be alright. So the story goes on, the race goes on, and I'm feeling really good. Uh, my ankles and stuff are definitely feeling a little beat up just because I'm not used to running in this type of terrain. Uh, and Jonathan, him and I, you know, strike a good, great conversation and come to find out this guy is ranked seventh in the nation for the 100 miler. Absolutely blew my mind. And not only that, he has a 240 marathon. So this guy is like an all-star and I'm out here with my, you know, running my first race. Well, he ended up, you know, being a huge support system for me and, you know, we just talked the whole way and it was really great. So running across, going all the way to mile 15, you know, so it was a two lap race. So you do it once 
and you hit 15 and then you go back and do it the other way. Well, you run along the Arkansas River. It is just so beautiful. You can run along that. There's tons of hills, tons of elevation, so it's very challenging. We finally get to mile 15. I was actually still feeling really good, but Phoebe was there. It was so great to see her. Um, and I think she recorded some clips as well that you guys could see right here. And so she was there. It definitely gave me some more inspiration, some motivation to get going. And uh, at the 15 mile marker, Jonathan, he's already ready to rock and roll. I'm like, Jonathan, you go on ahead. You know, I'm going to take a drink, eat a banana, and then I'll get going. If we meet up again, we'll meet up again. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. Um, when I come back around, I'm gonna take a little break. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are. Good. Yeah, I'll probably take some. I'm just gonna fill these up. No. What can we get you? I'm just gonna fill my bottles up. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe here in a minute. How's your run, sweetheart? Um, I'll probably take some goose. They might be a little easier. Um, I'm gonna, I'll get started here in a second. You go, go on ahead. Hopefully, I'll see you. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, that was pretty brutal. That was pretty brutal. Um, this will be good. Awesome, thank you. Your run's been good? Mm-hmm. All right, good. Take that side of the wrapper so you don't have to carry it. What would I do without my wife? Such a, such a blessing. Let's see, I'll just take an apple. Alright, hey, thank you guys for all of your help. Alright, let me, let me see. Huh? Halfway, halfway. halfway. Woo! Hopefully, I don't get lost again. So he took off and I could actually still see him a little bit in the distance. Uh, he probably had a minute or two on me. 
And so from mile 15 to 19, I was running by myself. So now he was in first place and I was in second place. But those four miles were terrible. Like it was so much better running with someone else and just keeping my mind off of everything else. But those four miles, I was still running a good pace, like 8.30 pace, nine minute pace, but it was just so boring and monotonous. And don't get me wrong, the trails were beautiful, the scenery was great, it was just, you know, a lot harder. Well, at mile 19, my buddy Seth drove three and a half hours to meet up with me for this race. And at mile 19, he joined in. And it was, he was a lifesaver. Now, this guy doesn't run. Seth is like a CrossFitter, like hardcore CrossFitter. Hasn't ran more. Guys, we know who has awesome friends. I have awesome friends. Look at Seth Myers making an appearance on this 50K. Joining in at mile 19. Woo! More than a mile and probably over a year, maybe even longer than that. And he ran the next three miles with me. And man, that was like a crucial point in the run where he really helped me get through those uh, three miles. He did slow my pace down a little bit. Don't tell him I said that. Uh, but it was still so beneficial. I would have walked, you know, a 15 minute mile to have his company, but we were still doing like nine, 10 minute miles. Well then come to mile 22, Seth has already gone. Come to mile 22, I'm running this way. And then I see Jonathan running this way. So we stop and we're like, oh gosh, one of us are going the wrong way. And so I was like, Jonathan, I really think that it's this way. Let's just follow this path. Let's go down this road. I think this is the right way. Well, it ended up being the right way. And then so Jonathan and I, we were just talking. We we're like, man, you know, there's no way we can beat the course record now. We, we know we're at least ahead by 10, 15 minutes. You just want to finish this together. And, you know, so we kind of made a pact that we were going to finish the race together, you know, go through the last eight miles together. And, uh, you know, at the begin at the end, you know, I was like, Jonathan, you got lost again. I know you're at least 10 minutes ahead of me. So when we get to the finish line, you finish a second ahead of me. I'll finish second. I don't mind whatsoever. And uh, so that's what we ended up doing. You know, like I was in this to finish a, a 50K, uh, not necessarily to win it. If I won it, that would have been awesome. But he was 10 minutes ahead of me, so I didn't mind at all letting him finish first. Me finish one second behind him. Well, anyway, towards the end of the race, you know, we were just enjoying it, talking, eating some good food, going through, running nine-minute paces or something. And we ended up finishing. Well, we get it like 0.2 miles away, and Jonathan was like, hey, Tommy, it will be really awesome if we make everyone think that we're like really battling this out at the end. So this last point two where everyone can see us, let's just like really act like we're just pushing each other's pace and try to finish strong. So that's exactly what we did and we started getting closer and everyone was like, oh Tommy, you can pass him, come on, go, go, go. I mean, you know, everyone was yelling at him doing the same thing, but we all knew what, him and I knew what was gonna happen. So he crossed the finish line one second in front of me. And so I ended up running my first trail my first ultra marathon, my first trail run in four hours and 41 minutes, finishing second. Uh, and then the course record was actually four hours and 10 minutes. So I had a great time. We actually, um, we stuck around for a while afterwards and we don't know when the third place guy finished. We know it was at least an hour and 15 minutes after us. So who knows? But it, uh, it was a tricky course. We got lost a few times, but overall it was a great time. Uh, I would highly recommend anyone get into running, get into trail running, and just, you know, set goals and accomplish them. You know, this was a goal I set back in January that I wanted to run an ultra marathon by the end of the year, and, uh, you know, I can't believe that it's happened. So, in my one year of running, I set some goals that just by providing progressive overload I've been able to accomplish. So I hope you guys will be encouraged and motivated to set some goals for yourself and just chase them, you know, with endless love and relentless passion. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please comment below. I would love to answer them. And I hope you guys enjoyed these videos of my first ultra marathon and my first trail race. All right, enjoy the rest of the video. Love you guys so much. Seth, how was running with Tommy? Oh, it was good. It was intense. He's a beast. He Here he comes. The last, the first two, I mean, sorry. They're head and head.
What's up guys? So we just finished my first 50K. Huge shout out to that man right there, Jonathan. He helped me throughout the entire race. Such a great man. And then this guy right here that ran how many miles with me? Two, maybe three. <laughs> yeah, so it was awesome. And then, of course, huge shout out to my beautiful wife, who is my biggest fan. Right, and I'm guys, so I thankful for her. K award that I wanted to give out. Uh, well guys, ow, I'm currently cramping everywhere, but man, talk about a good time. Honestly, it was so, so much fun. And like I said, my wife, Seth, and Jonathan, I cannot thank them enough for all their help throughout this race. But now it's time to devour some good food. So Frito pie there, and they kill it, burger. Beautiful wife has some Doritos and Frito. Oh, you did Frito pie? Ah, awesome. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Probably vlog a little bit more. Um, tell you guys, just give you a little bit of an overview of the race and how I thought it went. But for now, I'm going to celebrate with the fans. In 4 hours, 41 minutes and 25 seconds is Tommy Martin. Woo! Tommy from Little Rock. He didn't get lost getting to Tulsa, nor did he get lost on the course. Oh, much. Right. Much, yeah. Much is <laughs> And then first place, um, the time of, what, did you guys hold hands the whole time? Yep. <laughs> 4, 41, and 24 seconds. <laughs> he was 25 seconds. Wow. So, uh, Jonathan Kaczynski. No. Yeah. Kaczynski. Got it. So now that Tommy's run an ultra marathon, I think he thinks he's invincible. We are going to eat over there at BJ's Brew House, but we drove by the Texas Roadhouse and he thought, you know what, I'm craving a roll and their cinnamon butter. So I'm gonna go in and ask him if they'll give us two rolls and butter. So we will see how his little charm can get him two rolls with butter. Stay tuned. Oh boy, he is running across the parking lot. He must have got some. What they Look say? Look at this! <laughs> what they say? Oh gosh, tell me so, the story. I walked in there and I was like, all right, so I'm gonna be completely honest with you. My wife and I are going to BJ's Brew House to eat dinner, <laughs> but we're craving some Texas Roadhouse rolls. Is there any way I can get a couple? <laughs> And she's like, no, nah, you can't play me like that. I was like, come on, pretty please. And she's like, give me one second. So she ran See? to the back, oh! gave, it, gave me four rolls. For free. For free. With a butter? With two things of butter. Oh! Check that out. <laughs> Woo! All right, guys, so we get an appetizer with some delicious nachos after our other appetizer of the rolls. Um, not gonna vlog too much because we're gonna eat this food and enjoy our date. But just wanted to show you guys the rest of our food will only be pictures. You can keep yeah. vlogging that way. I can eat all of it. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna vlog because I don't want her to eat all of it. And I'm just gonna take pictures of the rest and I'll flash them up here so you guys see the rest of what we're eating after our marathon. All right, love you guys. Have a great night. So yes, Phoebe and I are super fat and did go get ice cream, which we are going to eat while we watch the Patriots game and then we will probably pass out because we are both exhausted and Phoebe has to work tomorrow at like 5 a.m. 6 a.m. She has to get up at 5 a.m. be at work by 6 a.m. so she definitely has to get some good rest and then I start in the emergency department on nights tomorrow but I told you oh, in pediatrics so I'm doing the switch which I'm pumped about but I told you guys I would give you guys a recap of the race so I'm gonna do that tomorrow morning, but it'll still be in this video. So for now, good night, sweet dreams, and keep on watching so you can hear the recap of the race.